Good afternoon, everyone, wherever you are joining us from. Um, it's such a great, great privilege for us all to be gathered here today. We welcome you all and thank you for joining us once again for the Nigeria Languages Data and Site Conference, second edition, third language innovation and community empowerment. Like it has been established earlier by one of our co-hosts, Onye Kachi. The Nigerian Languages Data and Site Tech Conference is dedicated to advancing linguistics diversity and technological innovation in Nigeria. One way we can achieve this is through collaborative efforts, which is one of the reasons why we are gathered here today. All thanks to God and of course our convener, Dr. Mr. Ayena Deshino A.K. Omoyumba, a man who has been great influence in the language at tech community and is still putting out beautiful works. All right, so uh, moving on, Dr. Ali Abdul-Aid at DBC will be taking us on the topic, preserving and advancing language in the age of digital technology, a case of translation in Yoruba, English, Arabic. Um, it is quite mind blowing that, you know, when you look at your left, your right, your front, your back, all you see is what? Majorly technology, like things are evolving and um, our language lives as well. Our languages, they live, right? And that is why, you know, we need to keep them from exiting. And um, we certainly appreciate Dr. Dal Dalami, who was our first keynote speaker in the first section we had. He has taught some aspects of this. You know, he spoke about language innovation and, um, you know, preventing our languages from extincting. And um, it was such an insightful uh, presentation. More about our keynote speaker for this section. Dr. Ali Abdulwahid ADBC is a senior lecturer of Arabic language education and translation studies at the University of Biloré, Nigeria. His research focuses on Arabic education and translation studies, he was appointed deputy director of the Center for Cultural Studies and Creative Arts at Unilore. Dr. Ali is also the president of Nigerian Institute of Translators and Interpreters, NITI. So we welcome you, Dr. Ali Abdulwahid Adebisi. The floor is all yours, sir. Thank you very much, my sister. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, good evening to everyone, wherever we are. Um, as my sister just um, uh, spoke out my topic for the day, preserving and advancing language in the age of digital technology, a case of translation in Yoruba, English, and Arabic. Uh, I think with this topic, as we can see so many variables in the topic, like about seven variables, uh, the a case of uh, Yoruba, English, Arabic, it means I'm authorized to speak any of the languages uh, in particular. Uh, you can see Yoruba, English, and uh, Arabic. Uh, moreover, we are talking about the preserving our indigenous language. Um, um, preserving and advancing language the age of uh, in the age of our digital technology. Lilo. Uh, or known before at the de see the mirror that if he a the sojo at he in mood of what you buy the asso la co la coco in my raw ayara piasa so uh it be a woo i want you to meta you ba guess at the that is the topic of my my today the second slide just welcome you all to this uh, gathering. Uh, I welcome you all and uh, I appreciate the organizer, Ayeni Adishina Omayuba, and also the anchor of uh, the program for this session. I, I also extend my, um, my warm regards to all the participants. You are all 
welcome here. Now, let's go to slide three. I'm sorry I couldn't make my slide uh, share to you due to some uh, difficulty that we are encounter uh, here. Um, slide three just um, is just about what is the language preservation. Summarily, language preservation is process of getting uh, getting one's language preserved from being go into extinction or died in totality. Yoba said, "Unti aba fisojo eno ewure olegbe unta aba fisojo ni tojo." That is when you preserve something. So it will it will stay long. It will stay long. That is, things that are, you don't prevent, it will easily go in extinction. That is the preservation. You know, I mentioned earlier on that uh, we are going to touch the each and every variable in the topic. We are having preserving. We are having advancing language. We are having a age of digital technology and then translation, Yoruba, English, and uh, Arabic. Now we understand what the preservation is meaning, the meaning of preservation. Uh, Let's go to slide four, please. Uh, in the slide four, we have the importance of language preservation. You know, we we discussed about preservation. Is there any importance attached to it? Yes, there are about nine points here. So I just selected this nine point in which we can understand the importance of uh, language preservation. First, we preserve language because of cultural heritage. So when you preserve your language, uh, you you know you you get your cultural heritage intacted. You get it uh, saved. Uh, you know, let me let me go. Let me look back a, a bit. Um, among the very popular Yoruba heritage, we can get it. We can get this from. Uh, some some beautiful thing of Yoruba or some hadith. Yoruba will say, "Eroju ode e omu omanyo sagba fo in kaso wale eroju ode e omu." So uh, then among other cultural heritage in which we can we can quickly uh, remember is that hadith, the song, "Iweki ko." Lai si oko ati ada ko ikwe o ko ikwe o isi agbe ni se ilewa eni ko si se amu ajali and so on and so forth. You can also remember in the olden day radio OIO radio or your radio. You know one of the oldest uh, state radio in Nigeria. Is this radio is situated in Ibadan. They used to you know to give a warning. To get yourself prepared against uh, arm robbery while going to, to to bed, you know. In the olden day, some of my my some of the participants will, will remember those who are living, uh, those who are uh, in the world after uh, in seventy, those who are already adults or mature, seventies uh, and eighties. So I already will say. Uh, 
bon lino ba fura o de ni opolo te ba fe sun lale etana ile yin ko esi ti le kun gbon gbon e toju uju ki ya o ka ma ba fara wa lo le lowo what i mean is that uh, cultural heritage is one of the importance of uh, language preservation without preserving our language we couldn't like, forget all this uh, cultural heritage it is with this language preservation the incoming generation would get into their real cultural heritage uh, number two here is uh, identity and belonging so one of the importance of language preservation is uh, identity and uh, belonging it is when you preserve your language it will it, it, it will you know uh help you know where you belong to you will say omoto so ilenu also apo yako so three years of communication and expression uh the other time i in my office at the university of Ilori, a yoruba student just come to my office he entered to my office and uh, she said doctor so no what, what i'm trying to say is that uh, i i sent the lady an errand, an errand and uh, she came back and i asked her a jambaka so she she quickly got lost a jambaka so and uh, you know uh when you was say a jambaka it is way of uh, communicating in a high level uh, or medium, medium level of uh, Yoruba that is, is, is it positive or negative? So, and we also have other advantages and importance of uh, language uh, preservation in the screen. We have uh, uh, linguistic uh, words. So I can uh, know, okay. Linguistic diversity, historical continuity, social cohesion and environmental knowledge and of course intellectual development please let's move to uh slide number five in the slide number five we have the impacts of digital technology in language preservation the impacts of digital technology on language uh, preservation uh we the impact is that uh, we have about uh, nine years. Number one is the documentation and uh, archiving. Uh, you know, if the the impact in which the uh, digital technology will play here are uh, numerous. So it will help us get our product documented and archived. I can remember a colleague of mine, I think, She's also here among the participants, Dr. Mrs. Aubakri Samiat, so a lecturer of the uh, Department of Linguistics and Nigerian Language. She is on a project of uh, getting, um, gather the, the work of uh, Babadi Ofagunwa. You know, we have it. Yeah, Dr. Mr. Zahobaka is doing that. Uh, how to get the oral version of the of the work in which you will be in your bed and just listening to the words, the the uh, the text and the work. We, you just listen to the work and the work. I could remember um Jim Aliu um did the drama make make a go to Marie. So as drama a movie in the 80s. But what Dr. Mrs. Albaker is now doing is that uh, to get it as an audio in which you will be listening to this uh, the, to this beautiful and uh, cultural heritage uh uh why why when you are in the more relaxed mood you sit down or you are in bed so that is one of the advantage of uh, the impact of digital technology in language preservation. Another one is accessibility. As accessibility, you know, you, you, you can get, 
you can get the, the you can get all this uh, preserved language or knowledge assessed. You know, there is difference between availability and accessibility. Things can be available at times and not be able, not, not be accessible. So you know, the impact of digital technology is to get this uh, language preservation uh, be, be assessed. The next point is that a language revitalization, uh, that is GGA Depada. You know, you party, you know, technology, I Arabia Saudi, you need to listen to if you do so, John, you pay your GA to Pada. To repay me, or Tia Batiri, Lori, a mo, Maura, a bit of cojina, Siwa, Ta, Lady, Lori, a one, a raw, only ruru, a raw tea, and Loni, a yet a way, your jeki, a day, total coup, codi, the Pada. Tavia, the two, two, who, come on The next one is language learning. Through the uh, impact of digital technology, we can get our language learning uh, more viable. Uh, that is Kikoi de Pelu to Ibalude. Also, we have a global collaboration. So, if also Oko to Kayeja, the program be to Tansilowe, Eric, if also Oko to Ko Ayijani. So, Tori Unta and Finian Fania Tigorawa. So, the next slide, please. Aha, the next slide is uh, we are now talking about the overview of Yoruba, English, and Arabic languages. You know, a, a, a case study of my presentation uh, revolve in these three languages. Yoruba language, of course, my mother tongue is Yoruba language. And uh, English language, English language is uh, uh, lingua franca, an official language of Nigeria, where I come from. And the Arabic language is language of uh, my profession. My professionalism is uh, Arabic language. That is why I'm working uh, my as a student of translation, my working languages are Yoruba, English, and Arabic. That is just the, the, the summary of this uh, slide six. And I was able to explain that Yoruba is a Niger Congo language spoken primarily in Nigeria and some parts of Bini and Togo. And that the English language is uh, one of the most widely spoken languages in the world, serving as Lugan Franca in many countries like Nigeria. And of course, Arabic. It's a semiotic language spoken in countries in most of the Asia countries, uh, Middle East and North Africa, Morocco, Egypt, Tunisia, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Iraq, Iran, and so on and so forth. That is what the meaning, the summary of this slide is. The next slide, please. The next slide is we are now talking about the evolution of digital technology that has revolutionized the field of uh, language preservation and overview. You know, um, I want to thank again the organizer of this uh, program. So the evolution of digital technology has been revolutionized since. So it is only here in Africa, we should try our best in uh, in maintaining this culture that is language pres preservation to sustain it to sustaining it you know we can we can be it, it can be sustained through this type of uh, program so let's look some points here digitization of audio and video if we we compare what that has been digitized the language products that has been digitized, be it audio or video. You cannot compare Africa to other um, European country and United States of America. So uh, in Europe, in America, they've succeeded. They have successfully digitized almost 
all the products of what they have in in language just go and google some of some of uh, our languages in, in in africa in any topic and google this too with uh, english or other uh rising european languages so yoga will say he let you much where any to basis a jilo can say g so i think we should try to join the race to join this trend of how to revolutionize our own language. Uh, in this regard, my current work is on Yoruba proverb, uh, in which I am trying to, to get it automated, automatically. When you Google, when you type one of, uh, when you type Yoruba language, it will give you the meaning automatically, the equivalent rather, in Arabic and English. I think I will discuss this when it got to the uh, case study of my presentation at the end of uh, the last slide. Another point in which I want to discuss is that the creation of online repository. So uh, that is Oja Ifi the Sojo Ali Lujara. That is, we should try to create uh, online some uh, our uh, repositories online. You know, as I as I mentioned earlier on, if you go into the cloud to to tap some uh, uh, some knowledge or information that has to do with languages, so you know you will get you will get African language there, but uh, very very minimum very, very, very minimum. So to preserve our own language too, it is the assignment and project for all. So these are other points. We have uh, creation of online repository, language learning app. Yes, this is another point. We should try to, to create and design language learning uh, app. You know, as I... As I mentioned earlier on, there's no base for comparison in which we are these uh, European people and the United States of America, uh, they've gone far. They've gone far in terms of uh, um, this uh, language learning application. The, the another point here is uh, machine translation. We also have natural language processing. We also have uh, global collaborative platforms. We also have a social media and networking. We can we can use the medium of a social media to network on how to get our language preserved. So we can, I'm sorry, we can see how our language uh, being bastardizing the, in the out, particularly Yoruba. So we should try as much as we can to use this social media uh networking the other time i could remember a professor a professor from the north so an announcer professor gave me uh, a letter to another professor in the buk by university in Kano, and that professor opened the the letter and i'll be, be reading the letter so the letter was written in Hausa language that's one of the way we can preserve our language to, to adapting it, to be using it to, you know. So uh, I'm not against the official language, lingua franca, our official language, but uh, notwithstanding, we should try as much as we can to, you know, to preserve our language by speaking it day in, day out. Next slide. The next slide, that is slide eight. I think I have 11 slides. Slide eight is the role of translation in language preservation. Um, the, one of the role of translation in language preservation is cross-cultural communication. Cross-cultural communication. By the time you are engaging in translating 
one language or other. You know, during the process, during the process, for instance, uh, by the time you are processing the source language into the target language, that source language will be gaining more popularity, more momentum. By implication, it will be it will be going to be stored along the way. So that is one of the way in which we can we can give our language longevity to get it uh, preserved. I want to urge each and everyone here to, particularly we that were we the student of transition to try as much as we can. There are a lot of books, there are a lot of novels in which we are yet to touch, despite that uh, our translators have done a lot of work. For example, all the five works of Baba Dio Fagunwa has been translated into English language, French language, as well as uh, Arabic language. So being a student of Arabic, you know, the um, has been translated by Professor Mashoud Mahmoud Jimba of the, the current Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic Warasi University, Malete, with the title Asoyadu Lijeri Ufiga Batle Afarit. Irene Kerido Nino Buelebeje has also been translated with the title uh, Alumoga Amaratu. Fi Aikati Ilibiji by Adibisi Toyiv. Then possibly Mohajimi has also been translated successfully by our professor, one of the professors at the University of Illini. I'm talking about the professor Ahmad Sheu Absalam, who translated Iriki Nibudu with the title Possibly Mohajimi. Likewise, Dr. Ahmed Raji Polonsho of Oslo uh, State University. I successfully translated uh, Aditu Elidumari with the title Al-Gazuli Ilahiya. And uh, my humble self, this is one of my little humble uh, contribution to knowledge. I've successfully uh, translated Igbo Elidumari with the title Al-Gazuli Ilahiya. You know, the, the role in which translation will play here is that uh, it will, it will get, it will, catapults and uh, throw your own culture into another community entirely. We, we can see Arabic language and Yoruba language. These are the extreme end, irreconcilable differences in terms of uh, cultures and other and other segment of life. So notwithstanding, you know, uh, a, an Arab man just called me recently to ask one of one or two things about Yoruba culture through this translated product. So Igbo Lutumari, that is al gabatul al Ilahiya. There are so many accountable materials in which we get in in Africa through translation, because the original, the original uh, work, so has got lost along the along the way. Likewise, let, let me use that uh, of Bible. You know, we have so many versions of Bible, Yoruba Bible, Hausa Bible, which scholars has been successfully translated, you know, by implication. So our culture, Yoruba culture, has been communicated to other communities. This is one of the of the role in which translation we we play. Um we we uh, we another example is that uh, we have so many products of Nigerian literary man, which has been translated into Arabic. Ninety nine percent of Professor uh, Waliso Yenka's uh, works has been translated into Arabic. So I can remember Al Ashia that is that is uh, things fall apart, and uh, we have. The trial of Brother Jero. So there are, there are a lot. That's as and things fall apart. Translated by Egyptian man. So 
um, one of the advantages is pre um, preservation of knowledge, revitalization of uh, endangered languages. So we can revive our endangered language through translation, because while translating it, so it we somehow, somehow unconsciousnessly get preserved. We also have literacy exchange and the preservation of oral traditions. So we um, uh, let's move to the next slide, please. That is slide number nine, digital platform for language preservation. I don't want to repeat myself with mm -hmm. this. This slide is just talking about the, uh, the essence of online language archive. You know, that is when we engage the digital technology, we will get our language being archived so, you know, I mentioned Google Drive and Cloud the other time. These are the way we can create our own platform for language pres uh, preservation. Uh, we also have for language learning application and website, social media and online uh, communities, language preservation apps, as well as digital libraries and open access uh, resources. Let's move to slide 10. Let's talk about the challenges and solutions. So one of the challenges of this, this work, this uh, presentation that is how to preserving and advancing language in the age of digital technology, one of the challenges in which we might encounter is limited resources. The limited funding and resources can in the de development and maintenance of digital language preservation projects. What is the solution? I propounded a solution here to this challenge. I put it, we can get partnership with organization. You know, the NLD, STC is a very viable uh, organization we can collaborate with this organization and uh, to apply for grants or um, to get some resources for the project uh, sustainability. Here, we can solve the challenges of our limited resources. There are a lot of uh, grants, manship, uh, uh, a lot of uh, organization giving out grants for for projects so we can collaborate and partner with others and get this uh, uh, resource in order to flow up our project another challenge here is the technological barriers limited access to technology or lack of technological expertise can impede the implementation of digital language preservation uh, initiatives. Solution. Solution is that we should try as much as we can to provide training and a capacity building like the program in which we are right now. This will, um, this will definitely empower the community member and the project stakeholders with the necessary technical skills to contribute to digital language preservation efforts. The other challenge, the other challenges, let's move to the slide. Another challenge is uh, community engagement. We can get a solution here. We should involve the community members. So then sustainability is another challenge. How do we sustain uh, this program in which particularly this organizer I just wrote today? Uh, kudos to them and congratulating to them. I congratulate them once again. And the solution is that uh, we should try to develop a sustainability plan. It will fail to it will fail to plan, uh, plan to to fail. We should try to to develop a sustainability plan. Establish partnership, as I mentioned earlier on, integrate projects into educational curricula, and engage in continuous outreach efforts to maintain. Uh, momentum and support for language preservation initiatives. 
also quality control. In anything we are doing, we should try to implement a quality assurance mechanism. Next slide, please. Next slide. I think this is the uh, next and last slide. Now let us let us now use a, a study, a case of a transition of Yoruba proverbs into English and Arabic. This is uh, one of the ongoing projects from my end. Um, now let's look. Let's pick the. Yoruba hadith or Yoruba proverbs, one after the other. Yoruba people will say, Ala tero godo. Unlo do kodu do lo sin sin. Ala tero godo. Unlo do kodu do lo sin sin. Now this statement, this proverb, this adage, it is easily for it to be preserved while getting, while uh, processing it for transition into other languages, for example, English and Arabic. You know, this is Yoruba. A typical Yoruba man will understand this. I'm afraid some of this uh, incoming generation, <laughs> our youth might not understand this uh, adage. But with digital technology, when what, all what they need is to just go and Google, Google this proverb, it will give them, uh, automatically give them the equivalence in English and Yoruba, English and Arabic. By implication, the source language, this Yoruba, it is, it is uh, automatic, automatically preserved. Now, when my project is done, when you click into it will give you the equivalent Arabic. That's just the equivalent. And uh, it will also give you the equivalent in, in English. Uh, history is written by the filters. That is just the equivalent. So let's let's take another example. The next proverb is Abati Soro, Yo Ketasari. Agba tio keun soro yo ketansari. This simply means in Arabic, adip awla daka tanja. Adip awla daka tarba. That is agba tio keun soro yo ketansari. My participant will 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 be will be soliloquy that hope this speaker will. Hope this speaker will give us the English equivalent. Yes, the English equivalent is yay. In English, just say spoil the rod, spoil the child. That is Agbatio Kelsoro. Yo ketosari. The next one is Alejo Tio Baponu ki isonu. Alejo Tio Baponu ki isonu. That is yeah, in, in Arabic, it will give the equivalent of Al Hikmatu. Do la to remove me if my that is the equivalent uh, in Arabic and uh, for the English English we can give equivalent of a a little just give it uh, knowledge is not strictly compartmentalizable that is the meaning knowledge is not strictly compartmentalizable the next one is a uh, alego go leku leku you know, Sunny Adri. So once upon a time, uh, trying to elongize a philanthropist and say, um, someone, Allah go go look, look, a bearing a rope, a lima, a lima, on the road, you are a day, you shall love something like that. Allah go go look, look, a bearing a rope, a lima, a lima. In Arabic, you just put it, uh, that can rojul out a rojulu, can see rumat. Arrojulu kefiru romat. In English, just we just give out the equivalent as um, when you want to elongate a philanthropist, just say he is always give without remembering and always receive without forgetting. That is a uh, uh, alagogulekuleku abenyaro kulima kulima. 
The next and the last one is Ojo uh, Toro You know, it was written in Loni. Ah, very, very every day. Ojo Toro, you fair whoop wole. That is when you want to describe in a heavy rain. So in the, uh, this, the equivalent of this in Arabic is in a tumutiru bigazara. In a tumutiru bigazara. And English, we just put an equivalent as it's raining cats and dogs. It's raining cats and dogs. Uh, this is a case study of uh, why translating the source language. Now here we have our source language as this uh, Yoruba uh, proverbs. So by the time you are translating them, so you are automatically preserving uh, you, our language. I want to thank you for listening and uh, good day to everyone. Thank you, Dr. Ali Abdwahid. We appreciate you for all the, you know, for this impactful presentation and all the aspects you've spoken about. Thank you, sir. Yeah, we're all right. Thank you. So before we take um, questions from um, participants, I have a question to you myself. And uh, yes, so um, one of the key themes that you've discussed in your presentation is that, oh, um, and as we can all see, translation is a key means of, um, you know, advancing and preserving our indigenous languages. And if we all can recall, most of our tradition and culture were orally passed down to us all. So, sir, do you think there is a secret ingredient or something that translators are missing that they do not have that is key and can help, you know, um, translate in a better way, and then our culture and these traditions can be preserved, just like the other major languages of the world. So what do you think, sir? Uh, what I'm thinking, this aspect that uh, I want to urge we, the student of translation, to, to go more. You know, some of us understand the translation and the strategies and the, uh, and the methods. But when it comes to transculturalism, transculturalism, we can Google this. Transculturalism also has a school of thoughts in the in the trans in the in the field of translation. You know, it is said that uh, practice make perfect. When we go further into transculturalism, one after the other, day in day out, we we'll get to it. Because I belong to, we have school of thought when it comes to translatability. There are school of thought. We, we believe that uh, not all cultures or uh, statement or language are translatable. But I, I don't belong to this uh, school of thought. I belong to school of thought of our translatability. That is, everything is translatable. So though it's not a day job, one just have to be conversant, one just to be to be focused and uh, you know to know what you want to what you want to to translate. You know, like a medical doctor or scientists have their own laboratory. Translators also have their own laboratory in which a, 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 a student of translation should day in, day out get more equipment uh, in, in his laboratory in order to get. Uh, is source language translated into the target language. So that is what I can say about uh, this. We got to it. We can we can we can we can be there, but uh, gradually, like uh, what I you know the my work Igbolud Mori. Igbolud Mori took me like uh, thirteen years. So I think I started the transition in two thousand and nine. And I get got it published year yeah, 2022. Please, I, I know my sister, you are Yoruba. Go and read the Diro Fagunwa's book. You see this uh, Yoruba Banko Banko, you know, and uh, we must get it translated. So I think with uh, perseverances and uh, focus and uh, not relenting our effort, we'll get the true transculturalism mechanisms. 
Thank you so much. I appreciate your response. So um, moving on, we are going to take, because of um, our keynote speaker has an unexpected event to attend, so we'll just be taking a few questions. And if you have... You. All, all right, sir. So if you have questions that you want to put across to him, you can drop them in the chat box. We are going to forward them to um, Dr. Ali, and then we will forward the responses back to you. All right, so we can just take about two quickly. That he can attend to be all right. Thank sir. you very so, much. Thank you. So, so Doctor Donami, if I'm saying that right, I'm so sorry. So, Doctor Sir, um, we are going to unmute you right now, so you can put your question quickly across to him. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, my sister. I'm having another program at the University of Illinois, which also started at uh, two o'clock simultaneously. I just want oh. to go and watch to catch the appointment. Thank you very much for this uh, opportunity. So. Oh. Um, I appreciate you. All I right, think the right, want to So okay. okay, can we just have one question from Dr. Hey, let me Danlami? Just, hey, let me get from my Dr. Danlami is my colleague. I just oh. uh, listened to to his presentation. Yes, okay. Dr. Danlami. Perfect, sir. Dr. Danlami, please let's have you, sir. Oh, he has left. Okay, please let if he has left, let let other get the question across to me. I would definitely right. attend to it after this uh, this uh, after my program, rather. All right, sir. Thank you so Thank much, you, sir. Man. It is so nice yeah. having you. Yeah. Thank you very but... much. <laughs> it is my pleasure to be uh, with you, and uh, I'm happy to uh, for the ability to make the presentation. Thank you very much. Okay. Next time when you call. So we will we, we'll be there. And uh, as in my lecture, I I encourage partnership and collaboration. I'm here to collaborate with you and uh, partner with you uh, uh, in all ramifications. Thank you very much. Beautiful, sir. Thank you. So we've heard from Dr. Ali. He said he's open to collaboration, partnership, and whatsoever it is you're interested in. So, you know, um, for all of us, we heard him. He will not be able to take questions, but that does not mean he will not be able to attend to those questions. You can leave them in the chat box. It's before that to him, and he's going to give us responses later on. Thank you. And you can as well appreciate, um, appreciate him in the chat box. Tell him how you feel. Okay, so I am Anulako Olomolaton, a language expert, a translator, and a um inter an, an interpreter as well. And um, it's just so nice having you once again. Thank you. And we implore you to also like you know follow up with all of our sections for this conference. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye bye. Bye, sir.